Hi, everybody. Lisa Larson here, animal communicator and energy healer, which is what we're talking about today. Energy healing is one of the services that I offer. Specifically, I offer both Reiki and shamanic healing. Those are the two energy healings that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm here with Alicia Alatriste. Hi, Lisa. How are you? Pretty good. How are you? Fine. Thank you. I'm glad that you're um, bringing this um for your viewers, because I noticed that a lot of people, they don't know what is energy healing. They don't know or experience, you know, the energy healing, especially with animals. So I was wondering if you can explain a little bit more about Reiki. Yeah, Reiki is probably the most well-known energy healing modality and what it is is it's it's the simplest thing in the world you take energy from the universe and you send it into the body and you you send it into the body for uh physical healing for emotional healing for balancing uh so people will call me to do reiki for things like animals who have high anxiety or who are going into surgery or coming out of surgery, recovering for sur from surgery. And it's, uh, it, it's, it's just a simple thing. You're, you're connecting with energy. You're connecting with the universe, with the positive energy of the universe, and you're sending it into the body. It's, it's just another form of healing that you can add to all of the different things that are out there, which we can talk about at an, another time. But these are the two that I do, Reiki and shamanic healing. But it's it's a great resource and I get good feedback from my clients. Yeah. And, and you know what? Um, I think it's very important if, if you can please explain to us between what is Reiki and shamanic healing because I don't think a lot of people know about the shamanic healing. Yeah, that's true. Um, so basically, all energy healing is is similar because you're you're really connecting to energy of the universe, energy of the person or the animal that you're working with. But I'll start by just very briefly describing what shamanism is. Shamanism. It has a lot of things under its umbrella, but one of the things that shamanism does is help people or help animals heal themselves. So I'd probably say that for me, shamanism uses more balancing than Reiki does, but all of them have their own advantages. Yes, because I, I notice that uh, with every, like you say, every energy modality is balancing, mm -hmm. right? And that, that I'm right? Yeah. And um, so, um, for example, one thing that I, that I remember that you say that is not very much into the energy is about the uh, one experience that you had that I, I would love uh, for you to share it with, the, with your viewers is when you uh, grok the cat under the house. Oh, grokking. Yes, I forgot to mention grokking. Grokking is a shamanic healing technique. And normally when I grok in a healing session, what I do is I merge my energy with the animal so that I can... Um, I, I like to try to reset the the subconscious, what we call the ku in in Huna, which is my sh shamanic view. And we try to reset things so that what I will do is I will merge my energy with them, see through their eyes. Maybe I'll give them, maybe if they have a problem with being afraid of somebody coming into the house, I'll merge my energy with them and I'll imagine somebody coming into the house and I will show them what it feels like to be calm. So that's what grokking is, but I used it in a different technique, a different for a different reason mm -hmm. with an animal. His name was Nibbler, 
He was an eight-month-old kitten, and he had gotten stuck underneath the house. He had gone into one of those you know, those uh, things underneath the house where they have the wire, like a little piece of, you know, and there's wire under it. Well, the wire had been cut away or something like that. And he got under there. And for two and a half days, almost three days, they had been trying to lure him out and they couldn't lure him out with food. And they had one spot that they had had a... um uh trap set up so that if he came out that way he'd go into a trap and then as i was on the phone with the parents i had told them that one of the things was that i saw when he went in there that he was afraid to come out because the wire was poking out from the inside so he was afraid to come through all those sharp ends of the wire So I told the dad, go cut that stuff all away so there's a clear space there. So he went and did did that. And and this was really urgent because it was getting to be nighttime. And that if he would spend one more night without food, he would have probably gone, gone into organ failure. So this was really serious. And so he had gone, he had cut some stuff away. It was getting dark. He had gone again then in, to get get a flashlight. And I was talking to mom on the phone. And I said, okay, well, I'm not going to explain to you what I'm going to do, but let me do something. And I was going to, I told her, I'm going to grok him. I'm not going to explain what it is right now. But as I was on the phone, I started grokking him. And walking him towards that area, towards that that place where he needs to come out. And I was telling him, you know, when you get to the other side, your mommy and daddy are going to be there to hug you and all of this stuff. And I tried to get him to walk towards the part where the trap was. And he was like, no, I don't want to go into that trap. And I said, okay, well, let's go over here. And this was as I was talking to her and I was telling mom, I'm having him do this. I'm having him do that. And I told him to walk over there. Mom's going to be outside when you get there. And as I was telling him to do that, I hear on the phone, oh, my God, he's coming out. He's coming out. He's coming out. (laughs) <laughs> and so it's usually not so immediate something that I, I I see the results so immediately but that was whereas it's usually a healing technique I mean I guess in some ways it was healing because it was healing his fear mm-hmm. you know and I got him to walk out as as I was doing it, as I was grokking him. And and she she sent me pictures afterwards of how happy he was to be inside. And actually, I talked to her. That was about a year, year and a half ago. And I talked to one of her other animals a few months ago. And she, he's just doing great. So, yeah, that was, I thank you for bringing that up. That's a, I love that story. Yeah, I love the story. When I heard it the first time in one of your classes, I was like, oh, my God. So I told everybody your your story, you know. But yeah. It's amazing. That's, I love it. I love it. But um, Yeah. But, but mostly the reason that people call me for energy healing would be things like uh, my animal is has separation anxiety or they're just naturally terrified they've been they've been abused so they've got real anxiety issues or maybe you know a lot of times people will call me my animals at the vet the emergency vet right now so can we give him some support and do some energy healing or like i say maybe when they're recovering or you know so it's physical and emotional problems that that I work with but that's that's why I will do it and for me you know I always mix the two so it's not as though somebody will order just Reiki from me or just shamanic healing I have a a a thing where I will do I'll start off with Reiki and then I do some shamanic healing and then I actually do some healing 
which I would consider shamanic healing. It was something that I learned from a healer in Canada. And I'm ta- not talking about healers like anybody around here. It's like once in a lifetime type of healer. Um, but it's kind of shamanic healing. And so I, I, I get in there. I, there's certain things that I do for every animal, like the, the Reiki and something called Kahi, which is a shamanic technique. But then I kind of get in there and I normally will grok, but it just depends on once I connect and see what the problem is with the animal, I will maybe kind of shift what I do to see what I feel they need at that point. And then afterwards, I will email the person and say, you know, I did this technique and this is the way that it felt. And I did that technique and this is the way that that felt. So they, the person doesn't have to be on the phone with me. I mean, it was unusual for me to do something like that, grokking with, with somebody on the phone. Uh, usually I just do your animals can be wherever they want to be, wherever they're comfortable at any point. And I sit down and I do it and I email afterwards and I say, this is the way that it felt. This is, you know, and we maybe come up with a plan. Sometimes people will just want one session. Other times people will, you know, want a, a, a series of sessions because they feel that it's working for their animal. Yeah, and I think that a lot of people are going to have a lot of questions about this. So I invite your viewers to put the, your questions here. Please. So we can answer the, the questions and comments, experiences with healing. Yes. Right? So we can share the experiences with other people. And um, and that, that that is an amazing subject that you brought this uh podcast and um and for people to to if they want to hire you for example uh to do uh healing uh can you share with us about you know where is uh where you know the, your website and where can we reach you yeah it's it's on my animal communication website under energy healing under services and and payment services and it's pawstalk.net, P-A-W-S-T-A-L-K.net. So, uh, so yeah, the same place you go for my animal communication services, you can order my healing services as well. And like I say, with animal communication, I usually have you on the phone. With healing, uh, you know, I will set up a time. I, I put it on my calendar. I let you know when it's done. And, and so you don't have to, to be... Um, you know, available at at any specific time. And can you tell us where to buy your book? Your oh one- yes, my book. Thank you very much. Yes, <laughs> uh, Amazon and Apple Books. You can get my book at, and uh, Amazon is hardback and ebook, and Apple Books is ebook. So thank you for that. And Alicia, your website for cat boarding in the San Diego area is, I'm going to say it, um, because the more I say it, the more I remember it. (laughs) CKittyResort.com. C is in cat, KittyResort.com. Do I have it right? Yes. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. Twice in a row. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you. I really appreciate that. Very good. Well, thank you, you guys, for joining us. We really appreciate it. Our next podcast is going to be about the importance of keeping your cats indoors. I know there's going to be some controversy around there, but we're going to, we're going to give that a shot. And I, I hope you guys are enjoying these podcast slash video casts. And if you are, please hit that like button and subscribe and the bell if you want to be notified of new videos. And we are very, very happy that you are here. Please comment. Please let us know that you're here and we will see you again. Thank you so much. And thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Lisa. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.